Okay. We are going to get ready here in a second, everybody. What's that? Just waiting for uh, the stream to catch up with me right now. <clears throat> there we go. I think we're good. I think we are streamified right now. We are definitely on a live stream. Everybody, good morning. Jim Cagnino with Infinity Futures. Appreciate you being here. Looks like we have a decent sized group. And I'm going to type in a comment. I'm just going to say hello. Hello, everyone. Everyone. Hopefully, you can hear me and see me. <clears throat> Good morning, W. W set. <coughs> Excuse me. Wow, that was rude. <coughs> Apologize for that. Let's get a couple more folks saying they could hear me and see me okay, and we'll get started here. Audio, video, all good. Thanks, Dan. Appreciate that. Okay, we're going to get started here right now. Um, talk about risk a little bit. We do have a, a risk disclosure statement I have on the screen from our website. I want to talk to you about it a little bit. Uh, trading futures is a little different. You have a high combination of leverage and volatility. Although for, you know, that's an equation for opportunity, it's also an equation for risk. So be careful, uh, slow your roll, easy with the day trade margins. Yeah, we offer affordable day trade margins. Use them when necessary, not as a regular way to go. Uh, just keep that in mind. You, you, do have, you do have this extra level of, of leverage, which uh, is, the whole, is the whole story. In addition to the liquidity, in addition to the volatility, that's where the opportunity lies. But be careful with the leverage. Be careful with the day trading margins. Um, that's kind of number one. Number two, um, we're not going to talk about past performance. I'm going to show how to use the platform today. That's it. I'll be, lo I'll be logged in in demo mode or sim live mode. Uh, customers have the option. If you're a funded account, you could you could log in on to live mode. Um, or you could live into simulated live mode where the trades don't count, but you could practice and set up things and... Uh, back test and all that stuff. So two different modes. I'm going to log in on in demo mode, which is you know sim simulated live mode, and I'm going to walk you through it from the start on how to get going here. As we go forward, any questions that you might have um, on anything, shoot them in. I'll try to pick them up as we go, and I'm going to kind of methodically walk through how to do this whole thing. We're going to focus on the web-based platform, the Infinity AT Pro and the Infinity AT Charts. There's a lot of stuff going on with them, and they're pretty awesome. So having said all that, James, good morning. Uh, thanks for coming, actually. Don't thank me. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Um, it's a little, little bit of a later start today, 10 o'clock. I got, I got time, so we're not going to rush. We're going to take our time. So I, I'm going to talk about <clears throat> um, if, if you're not a customer, you're going to log in from a web link. If you're not a customer, you're going to log in from a web link. If you are a customer, you're going to log in from the client portal. That's in the upper right corner here, client portal. You're going to log in with your username and password, and it's a transact uh, client portal, and then you'll be able to launch the charts the same way I'm about to do them. Okay? So that's the difference. Non-customers follow me. We're going to go to platform. There's a platform tab at the top, and I'm going to pick web-based AT Pro, and I'm going to scroll down to, here, to the bottom, and there's a couple of options down here. <clears throat> Excuse me. A couple of options down here. Option one is I could launch the dashboard, the charts, and the dome. Option two is I just launched the charts. And why is there two options here? H hang on one second, guys. Having some allergic re reaction to that tangerine I just ate. <laughs> Dangerous. Good morning, Polly, Dion. So the reason for me, if I'm using a cell phone instead of a laptop, instead of a PC, instead of an Apple, instead of something else, um, I like to launch just the charts because they fit in my phone better. I have a small iPhone 7 or something like that. I don't know. It might be a 6 or a 5 or a 4. I mean, it's, it's not a real good one. It's small. So 
in order to see things, I launched the chart and then I could place trades from the chart on the phone. That's why I use the second one. The first one, if you have a bigger display, maybe it's an iPad, maybe it's a, a Mac, maybe it's a PC, I'm going to click on this button, launch AT Pro here. That's the difference. I'm going to click on that and it's going to give me a login page, right? And hopefully it memorizes it. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to put my username in here again, demo username, demo password. I'm not a customer. I'm, I'm, I'm a prospect. I'm a, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm kicking the tires. I'm deciding whether or not this is right for me. I'm going to click on the launch AT pro dashboard and it's going to launch. <clears throat> now, the first thing you see is this. Right, this is called the dashboard, and it's broken up into into a couple of different areas. Here, you've got the left hand side and the right hand side. The left hand side consists of a of a quote board, or we call it a scoreboard. The underneath it is the open orders area, where you'll see all your open orders. Uh, at the bottom, there's a, a filled orders, uh, where you see all your filled orders. And on the right hand side, there's some other stuff too. There's uh, messages that you will get when you trade that will fill this area up and scroll. There's settings, which we're going to talk about because we're going to adjust some things right away. There's FAQs. These are com commonly asked questions. They're, they're, they're uh, well answered. You know, if you have a question, you might see them on here or you could call me or email me or come to an event, whatever you want to do. Um, sec there's a two chart layout where I could put two charts here. And there's a four chart layout where I could put four charts here. This comprises the dashboard, all of this stuff. Before I do anything, I'm going to go to my settings and I'm going to change a couple of things. I'm going to turn off show tool tips. You see how my mouse hovers over and gives me a tool tip? Well, I'm not going to do that just because we're doing a presentation and, and so it's annoying me. I don't want to be annoyed. So I'm going to turn it off. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to launch a chart in a new window, I want to turn that on because when I launch a chart, I don't want it to be in the actual t template. There's another, uh, there's a, there's a direct method to add a chart to the two chart and four chart view. But when I launch a chart from the dome, what I want to do is I want to launch it in a new browser window. So I'm going to click that to turn it on. All this other stuff I'm going to leave alone. Flashing prices, if they annoy you, turn them off. You know, you could add timestamps. You could, you could do all of this stuff. But the most important ones I just showed you. So let's go ahead and take the next step. The next step is adding, adding a, well, before we even take the next step, well, I'll, let's take the next step. We're going to add it. We're going to add some quotes to our, our, our dashboard here. So I'm going to go to select a contract and a drop down menu comes up. And I'm going to pick from one of these markets, right? And remember, futures markets, they cover just about every asset class you could think of. There's a lot of different things to consider trading when you're trading futures. You know, there, if there's an ETF for it, there's a futures for it. Futures are more cost effective and, and more efficient, and they're traded on a transparent regulated exchange. That's my pitch for why futures are better than ETFs. But in any event, um, there's all sorts of uh, markets here. I'm going to choose a couple of the common ones. We'll go to the E-mini S&P. This is the original S&P, e electronic E-mini S&P. I'm going to click on it, the symbol, ESH1. ESH1 is a symbol for the front month that's, that we're trading right now. And I'm going to click the Add button. It's going to add the quote right there. I'm going to do this for another contract. We're going to go ahead and add it. Let's let's, I'm going to do a, a micro NASDAQ. So that would be M M N Q M N Q. H, click on that, and I'm going to add it. So I can continually add contracts here uh, until my, you know, my quote board is the way I want it, right? I'm going to add the, the Dow, YM. Uh, we'll add the Russell 2000, RTY, and so on and so forth. We could change asset classes now. Okay, I want to add some treasury bonds. We'll do ZB. I'll add ZB, and then maybe we'll add... Um, Treasury notes, 10-year treasury notes, which is ZN. Scroll down to find ZN here. We'll add that and so on and so forth. So you can, you can totally customize this however you want. Um, I'll add a couple of more just for fun. We'll add gold. We'll add GC. Uh, I think we're in April. Let's find out. Yeah. And then I'm going to add... Um, 
let's see, gold, we'll add crude oil. Crude oil is a popular one, CL. And then I'll add a couple of currencies. We'll add uh, the British pound sterling. We'll add the Euro FX. Okay, so I'm just selecting them and adding them, and here they are. Now, if I want to move their order around, I'm just going to highlight it, click on the actual symbol, and see how it turns red? That line turns red, and I could move this around. I could move it up. I can move it up and position it however I want on my quote board. Okay, that's kind of one easy trick to, to do. If I want to remove the contract, I'm going to highlight it and I hit the remove button, right? I hit the remove button. It removes it. I want to add it back. I'm going to go back and try to find it. I think I just removed gold, which was GC12, uh, GCJ for the April contract. And there we go. So that's all kind of easy. It's, it's kind of, it's a little bit overwhelming because you do have a lot of stuff up here, but um, once you get the hang of it, it's pretty, pretty straightforward, pretty straightforward. And if you highlight a contract, uh, it'll give you an ability to do things like flatten all your ZB positions if you want. So it could, or if you don't have a, a contract highlighted, you could click flatten all to flatten all your positions, kind of like a panic button. Okay. So I'm going to take a break right now and look at the question board. Joseph asked, why does the platform log you out after X amount of time? Um, I don't know. That's a good question. My guess is the security thing. If you're not active on it after a while, um, if you're active on it, it shouldn't, it's never logged me off when I'm charting or trading. Um, but if it's sitting there idle for a while, it might be a security thing. Um, I can find out the answer for you, though. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, second question. When you select launch chart in new window, I cannot launch multiples of the same chart. It just refreshes. Okay. Um, I'll show you how to fix that problem. Uh, RC says, what's the difference between AT charts and AT chart pro? AT charts is just the chart portion. The AT, there's only one web-based chart, it's AT charts. AT pro is all, all three of the components, the trading ladder, the dashboard, and the charts. And I'll show you how to, how to pick them apart in a second here. Okay. So we have our quote boards here. You know, these things are flashing. We talked about, hey, maybe we want to turn flashing prices off. You know, I, I click on that thing and it'll stop flashing. Maybe I won't get a headache. And maybe that's my allergy problem. I don't know. So um, I'm going to go over here, though, on my four chart. I want to add some charts, right? So I'm going to select here to click and I'm going to move over to whichever chart I want to add. Let's say the E-mini S&P. And there's a little C there, right? I'm going to click on the C and it's going to add it to that space. And I'm just going to change it to whatever time frame I want. We'll change it to a 10-minute time frame. Everybody knows I love the 10-minute time frame. And, you know, let's go ahead and do it again. I'll add the, uh, the NASDAQ over here. We'll add the micro NASDAQ. Click to add a chart. Uh, we'll add uh, crude oil. Click to add a chart. And then we'll add, um, we'll add gold. What did I do with my gold? All right, there we go. Click that chart. I'm going to add gold. Okay, so now I've added this process, and I'm going to save this, and I'll just call it default. If I wanted to call it, change it to call it to something else, I'd call it CAGS charts, and just hit save button. All right, so we saved it. So we're locked in now. We're locked and loaded. I'm going to save my contracts up here also. Hit that save button, save contracts. Okay, so now, so now we have a, this is a dashboard. This is a thing, right? We could see it, and we could you know, contemplate it. Um, if I want to make a little bit more room, there's a triple arrows up here. You could click and it kind of gets rid of that top area there. The triple arrows, you click again and it brings this little bottom arrow do area down here, which shows your P&L and account status and all that kind of stuff. Same with this little, this little triple arrow on the left-hand side. If you just wanted to see the chart, you'd click on that and it would shrink it. If you don't, you want to see the whole thing. There you, there, there you go. So it's kind of the basic setting up my first glance view, right? Not too hard. All I did was add contracts and then I added some charts. On my two chart view, I don't have any charts there. I'm not interested in that. I'm going to leave it alone. And that's it. So let, let's talk about this. This is a window. This is a tab based window, right? I could move it around. I, I could move it around. I could put it on different monitors. I could, I could make it small. I could make it big, whatever I want to do. Right now, if I want to launch a chart and remember in the settings, we changed our setting to launch chart in a new window. Right. So let's say I want to I, I want I want to work on a chart. Right. I really want 
I really want, I want to work on it. I want some room. This area here is too small. Um, so let's go ahead and click on that ESC, the C next to ES. And it's going to open up what amounts to a new window. And the chart's going to populate. And wow, that's kind of ugly. I didn't see that till just now. And we have our chart. I got the black background. I know people didn't like the white background. So I'm going to show you how to change all that stuff if you want. Um, but this is a chart. So now if if I wanted to say, let's say I want, you know, this is a 10 minute chart, but I want another, I want a chart, I want an ES, but I want a, I want a, I want a 30 minute chart, right? And this goes to, I think, uh, maybe Joe's question. I want a 30 minute chart. I'm going to go up to my bar up here. Oops, what I do? Um, no, that's good. And I'm going to right click. And I'm going to say show as a tab. I want to show this as a tab, and it's going to show it as a tab. Now that I have now on the tab itself, once I show it as a tab, I didn't kick everybody out, did I? No. There you are. I'm going to right click on the tab, and I'm going to say duplicate. So now it's duplicated the chart. I've got the same 10 minute chart here, the same 10 minute chart there. And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna grab this with my mouse or my finger and I'm gonna pull it apart. I'm gonna pull it apart. And now I have two charts side by side. And if I was any good at manipulating my mouse, I would have this thing set up side by side. That's what we're gonna do, side by side. Now, and Joe, I'm getting there because the only thing I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna change my time frame on the on the chart on the right. I'm gonna hit the 10 minute button at the top and change it to a 30 minute. And so now what I've done is I've launched the chart in a new browser window. I've duplicated it and then I've separated it in the browser so it's two different windows. And then I've changed time frames on one of them. That Joe Joseph, that's how I do it. That's how I would do that 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 manipulation. And it's it's pretty straightforward. It's pretty easy. So, um, and you could do it all day long. I mean, you could have as, as, as many of these open as you have real estate for on your computer screens. Um, you know, this is just like a PC based, uh, web based stuff, you know, it uses processing power. So, you know, be sure you have the stuff that one, you have a dedicated trading machine. That's number one. Number two, you have the stuff, you know, that you need on there to keep their processing speed cranking, your internet connection cranking. So you get the you get you get data quickly and your trade executions are quickly. Okay, so I'm gonna close this, just right click and get rid of 30 minute. And I wanna add instead of a instead of a a uh, chart, I wanna add a trading ladder or a dome, depth of market. Some people call it a matrix. We're gonna call it the dome. There's a little D next to the contract, right? ESH1 has a little D there. I'm gonna click on the D and it's gonna open up a trading ladder. Now I'm just going to move this out of the. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to move this out of the way for a minute, and I'm going to pull this over here. And I've opened up. Let me just minimize that. I opened up a trading ladder. This is a you know it's a, it's a it's a it's a Nasdaq level two. That's an old terminology I'm using. A, a, a Nasdaq level two trading ladder. And why is it level two? Well, because you see bids and offers ten ticks deep. You see bids 10 ticks down from the last traded price. You see offers 10 ticks up from the last traded price. And that's, and that's, and that's, and that's, and that's the name of it for whatever it's worth. But those are actual uh, orders in the Globex order book for limit orders from traders who would like to place, you know, execute at those, at those prices. And those prices are changing, right? Those, those, the prices are changing of the market. That's that dark blue line that's going across. And the bids and offers are changing. People are adding to it, subtracting from it, canceling, replacing it, changing prices, and doing all sorts of stuff. It's very dynamic. Now, one of the things that's kind of, that's universal here is this settings, idea of settings, right? I can control my setting by clicking on that settings thing. And the first thing I'm going to do, because I'm a little older and my eyesight's not very good, I'm going to go to legacy color scheme and I'm going to make that a plus. I'm going to make that a plus and it changes it to a brighter display. It's easier for me personally. If you like the, if you like the modern black and gray, go with the modern black and gray. I, you know, I don't know. The, the programmer guys are young and hip and they tell me black and gray is cool. I, I, all right, fine. But I, you know, I got the legacy color here. So this is the trading ladder. A lot of stuff over here on the left. Don't worry about that too much just yet. Don't worry about that uh, too much just yet. 
Greg wants to know, can I scroll up or down on the dome when I have a target or a stop that I want to change? Yeah, just put your, your cursor in the middle and use the roller of your mouse or your finger if you're using the finger. I'm just rolling up, rolling down. Piece of cake. See how fun that is? Easy. Easy peasy. Okay. So now I have a chart. And now I have a trading ladder. Some folks prefer to trade from a tra from from the trading ladder. Some folks prefer to trade from a chart. They're totally in sync. You can do whichever one you'd like to do. Okay. And Lewis, I don't understand the question about time frame. I, if, are you talking about the charts? I'm in a 10 minute t time frame. If you're talking about the dome, there's no time frame. This dome is tick by tick, real time. Volume profile histogram on the right hand side since the start of the session, which was five o'clock last night, Chicago time, all night, all morning, up until now. That's what this 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 purple column is. Okay. So all right, so everything's good. We're we're set up. We're ready to trade. We could do stuff. We could do our technical analysis. We could do our trading. Now you could have as many trading ladders up as you want. Let's let's do it. Let's do that. That'll be fun. I'm gonna go ahead and add. Um, I don't know. Let's do a let's do a, um, a, a a micro Nasdaq as an example. I'm gonna hit the D next to the you know the quote the D right next to the MNQ symbol. It's gonna open up another. Uh, uh, trading ladder or, or depth of market and look at that thing go that thing is going like gangbusters I'm gonna go to settings and again I'm gonna click on uh, you know the the color thingy uh, legacy color scheme hit that button and make it a plus there you go so you could have as many of these open as you want or as few of these open as you want as many charts open as you want as few of them open as you want um, and notice I'm not even looking at the dashboard right now I don't care about the dashboard right now. You might. It's a good thing. I mean, it's a good tool. But right now, I'm not interested. If I want to close the trading ladder, just there's an X in the upper right-hand corner. Just hit close. Really, real simple. Okay. So I'm going to open up the trading area of the charts. See that yin and yang button at the upper right-hand corner? It's an arrow up and an arrow down. Morning classic. Appreciate you being here. Click on that. It opens up a trading area here. Okay, and the reason I'm gonna I did that right now is so we could just kind of see how order entry works. Now, the first thing I want to do to place a trade is I want to decide what size of a trade do I want to place. How many contracts would I like to trade at one time? Uh, if they're called cars, they're called contracts. They're you know you, you can call them what you want, but I'm gonna call them contracts. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a quantity here. I could do it manually, or I could click on on one of the presets. I can click on one of the presets. Let's just say one. Okay, so I have quantity one. I have a quantity set in there. You got to have something set in there, or your trade won't work. Now, the easiest way to place a trade is 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 you're gonna you, is just simply doing it from either the blue side if you want to buy, or the pink side if you want to sell. Okay, and uh, you know tr traditionally. Um, traders m might say, listen, I want to buy a contract. I want to buy an E-mini S&P contract uh, at a price of uh, 3900 3, even. So 39.000. And I'm simply going to move my mouse over to the, buy, the blue side, the buy column. And before I click, you're going to see it says B limit. It's, Jim, you're about to place a buy limit at 3900 Okay, thank you for reminding me. I click and it's sent. It goes from your computer to the servers to the exchange and back. And when you get this number here in this column, that means that your your trade is at the CME group waiting to be filled. That's in the Globex order book. Globex is the CME's electronic marketplace. The other thing to keep in mind is look at on your chart. It also is graphically represented here with this this uh, cocktail stir, sideways cocktail stir. I'm sure that's not what it's called in, re in real life, but <laughs> that's what I'm calling it, or label, or whatever you want to call it. Okay, so these are totally in sync. If you do something here, it shows up there. If you do something there, it shows up here. Alternatively, someone might want to say, "Hey, I want to sell a contract at I don't know. Let's just pick a number, 39.05 even." They're going to move their mouse over to the to the pink column for the, the sell side. And then it says there's a little yellow flag there. I don't know if you can see it. It says S limit. And Jim, you're about to place a, a limit order to sell. I click once. The order's there. 
mimicked on the charts. Really, really that easy. Now, um, we're about to actually get a fill here at 3,900. We just did. Market hit our cut, went through our price, gave us our fill, and 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 gave and created a long position. We're plus one. We're long one contract. David, uh, answer your question is yes and yes. This will be this will survive on YouTube as a recording. Same link after we're done. You can stay on there, check it out, pause it, rewind it, um, whatever you want to do. Um, and there's tick charts for sure. I'll get it. I'll get to that also today. We bought one 3,900, right? It's graphically represented with that yellow highlight in the middle of the trading ladder. So that's where you know where your position is. The market now is a little bit higher. It's in the blue. That's kind of encroaching back toward us. And that's called mark to market. That's where the market is. That's where the last transaction occurred where the last buyer and seller agreed to do a price, and they didn't really agree, but it was matched electronically at Globex, that's that's when the price changes, right? When, when a buyer and seller gets matched up at a price, that's where the price changes, and that's called mark-to-market. So my open p l is at the bottom. It shows what my open p l is on this trade, gross p l trade p l based on Mark to market, where the market is. So in other words, hey, Jim, if you get out at this price, here's how much money you'd make or here's how much money you would lose, depending on if it was a good trade or a bad trade. Okay. My limit order is still here. I didn't change it. It's still sitting there. And the other, th the only other thing I want to do is put a stop loss in. In this case, the trade's going well. So I'm going to put a stop loss, a sell stop loss, right? I'm long one. I want to sell stop loss. One tick above my entry. And this is just, you could put it wherever you want. But notice when I move my mouse over, it says S stop. Hey, Jim, you're about to place a sell stop below the market. And we just got filled there. Sorry, that was, that was, uh, I should have uh, put, put it down a little further so we could see it better. But um, stops to sell are below the market. Sell limit orders are above the market. We ended up closing out the trade. My closed PL, $12.50. And this is a cumulative PL. Good morning, David. Um, thanks for coming. Appreciate it. So we're going to do the whole thing over again. I'm going to, I want to get rid of this trade though. I want to get rid of this one. I changed my mind. A couple ways to do it. Cancel all. It cancels all of your working orders. Or just right click on it. Right click. Right click, it's gone. Don't see it on either side. Okay. So the cancel all comes in handy when your dome looks something like this. You know, you have a whole bunch of orders. And instead of you decide to change your mind, hit the cancel all button and it will cancel them all. Okay. Alternatively, um, if you have some orders in here and you want to cancel it from the charts, you'll see the cancel cancel button here on the actual trading panel of the chart. Click on that. It goes away. Everything's cool. RC, that's what we're doing, man. We're 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 video tutorial tutorialing it live right here, right now. There's videos on the website though. Go to infinityfutures.com education. There's videos there. Okay. Um, now for those of you who are new in futures trading, you could sell a contract before you buy one. And you don't have to borrow money from anybody or anything like that. That's not a thing. I'm just gonna go ahead and sell let's sell a contract here at uh, 3903. And there it is. There's my one contract and the limit order column. It's been sent to the exchange and back. I'm seeing it on my trading ladder. And if the market gets there, I'm going to be short one contract. Now, let's decide, you know what? That price is too far away. I want to move it down. I want to, I want to bring it down to 02. You click once, left click once, bring your mouse down, left click again, and you just cancel and replace that order. You just cancel and replace that order. Now the order is at, 02, at 39 .02. And you can continue to do that as long as you want. Andre, the answer to the question is yes, and we are going to get to that shortly. Hang tight. Bear with me. I did want to get a short position in here right here. So let's do this. Let's let's just do a market order. Sell market order. Quantity one. Hit the sell market order button. I am short one contract. It's red. It's color coded. It's minus one. My position is 38.96. Okay, it was a pretty bad, bad idea. 
because I'm, I'm losing money now, but that's okay. Let's see what happens. Um, and you know, so right now, in order to profit, I'm going to have to buy lower than this 96 number, right? Because that's where that's where I entered. I'm, I'm short from 96. I want to buy it back at a lower price. So I'm going to put my mouse in the blue column and click buy. Now, keep in mind, guys, for those of you who are on my, in my Tuesday and Thursday events, I'm just randomly placing trades today. There's no science to what I'm doing. So definitely don't follow along. Just I'm just kind of demonstrating the, the functionality. So short one, we have a profit target, you know, a, a profit target, take profit, profit target order at 94 even. And now I'm going to put a stop in too, because I don't want to, you know, if I'm wrong, if my opinion is wrong and the market's going to rise instead of fall, I want to get out. I don't want to, I don't want to blow my whole, my whole account. So I'm going to put a stop over here. It'll be a buy stop, right? Because I'm long one, I'm short one. So it'll be a buy stop. I'm going to click here. The mouse tells me what it is. It's all good. Color coded red. Stops are red. Limit orders are green. There you go. There's the anatomy of a trade. That's the anatomy of a trade on the short side. And you can see here the little labels uh, that are, are signaling the same thing. Now, if you wanted to change an order from the chart, and I'll get into order entry on the chart too, you're going to click on the label. And you could just move it to wherever you want to move it to by dragging it with your finger or dragging it with the mouse. Hit replace. It's moved. Same thing with this one. And it moves it in both places. Remember, this: the dome and the chart are in sync. Cancel and replace. That simple. Really easy to do. Okay. Um, another kind of, another setting thing. I'm going to go to my settings. And I'm going to, I have checked flatten button also cancels all. That's important because I'm going to hit the cancel button right now and it's going to cancel all of my working orders that aren't already filled. So the flatten button here, when I click on that, it's going to buy a contract for me at the market. So I'll be flat. I'll have zero position and it's also going to cancel the stop and it's going to cancel the, the, the limit order. I like to think of it as a panic button. I mean, you know, it's it's something you could do quickly, just to just to stop the madness, or you could do it deliberately if it's part of your strategy. I'm going to do it deliberately right now. I'm just going to go ahead and hit the flatten button. I'm flattened. I don't have any positions. My orders were canceled. You don't see them anywhere. Everything is good. Now I want to pivot back to the this guy. I want to pivot back to this guy. We don't have any working orders, right? Let me put a working order in just for fun so you can see it. All right. And I'll do this. We have an open order to sell one contract, 91, 01.5, 01.5. Open order. Filled orders, these are all the trades we've done today so far. And it shows us, you know, it shows us, you know, we bought one at a price, order ID, user ID, that's my count, uh, and then the timestamp. So that provides some interesting information. And then I sold one and I sold one and I bought one. And, and they're in order, you know, you could, you, could, you could sort them however you want. You know, if you had multiple markets here, you'd see multiple orders here um, and the actual in the actual area. So that's kind of cool. Um, the, you could you could actually, depending on how your screen is laid out, click on this filled orders uh, name for the section, and you could change the width. You could change the width to match your layout for each column. It's just kind of a formatting thing. Um, and then you just hit close and it's good. Same thing with open orders. Click on the open orders. You could just change the, you know, change the column sizes. You want to make it look more aesthetic. You could do that pretty easily. Back down to the fill orders. Okay, we've assimilated these fills. We know what's going on. We get it. We could download it to a CVS file if we want. Maybe you want to do that at the end of the day. You have some ability to do some, you know, analysis. Or acknowledge uh, acknowledge fills. If I click acknowledge fills, it changes it from green to black and gray. And the reason that's there is, you know, maybe you're going to trade more later on, and you have so many filled filled orders there in the way you want to see what's new and what's not new. That's just a little formatting formatting trick, right? 
really. If I want to cancel this order, I can cancel it from here. I don't have to use to cancel it from the chart. I don't have to cancel it from the dome. Yes, and it cancels. Oops, I'm sorry. I got to highlight it. <laughs> cancel it. Continue. It's gone. So that's pretty easy. Um, okay, so that's some basic formatting stuff. Some real basic order entry. Enter. Click. Click. Right click to cancel, click and click to change the price, right click to cancel. Let's, let's, we'll talk about these more complicated order types in a minute. Let's shoot over to the chart side. Jan, we'll get to that for, in a second. Sam, thank you. I appreciate that. That's very kind to hear. Andre, here we go. I have my market selected. Now, let's do the same thing. I want to buy on a limit order. I'm going to click that buy button in the upper right-hand corner. Now, I got a trade ticket. I got to drag it down to whatever price I want. Use your finger, use your mouse, whatever, whatever you can. If I dra drag it above, it's going to place a buy stop. Drag it below, it's going to place a buy limit. Pick my price, hit the buy button, and there is my familiar cocktail swirler mixer. Mimicked on the on there on the on the dome, everything is good. And so the market gets to me. I'm going to get filled. I'm going to get filled. I'm not going to get filled. <laughs> Hang on, everybody. We're going to get filled here in a second. I'm confident. I have confidence in my. Uh... There we go. Okay, so we got filled. Now what? All right. So let's take a look. Es one. My position is one. Open P and L, you know that's gonna that's gonna be an estimate. It's gonna change, you know, when when your when your thing refreshes, um, you know, it's it'll tell you, give you an idea where your P and L is. This is a lot quicker on the trading ladder, and then it also shows you up at the top estimated P and L. This is for your whole account, by the way. Okay, so, but you don't really get to see where the fill it. You know, you you don't see it on the chart. You don't see your price on the chart. So one way to do that is you go to studies. And you're going to click on um, average OT, very first one, average OTE price. OTE price. And it's, give a, it's going to give a white line along with a label. And you could edit that if you don't want the, the label. You just want the white line. Just hit done. And then there it is. That's your average, that's your average price. It's the equivalent of that yellow highlight on the trading dome. Okay. So that's kind of, I don't know. I think it's handy. I, I, I like to use it. You might not, you, you might not care, but I, I do. So that's how you do a buy limit order. Now I want to do a sell limit order. I want to take profit on this trade. So I'm going to click on the sell. And again, I'm going to get another color coded trading, trading, uh, I don't know, ticket, label, whatever you want to call it, window. I could drag it up here for a limit order, drag it down here for a stop. In this particular case, I'm going to drag it up here for, for, a, for, a, for a limit order, which will be my target. And I'm going to hit the sell button. There we go. It's on the dome, 02 even. It's on the chart, 02 even. And everything is good in the world. Hopefully, my opinion is right. The market rallies up to 02, and I'm able to make some money. Now, I want to protect myself again. Remember, I want to put a stop in. So I'm going to manually this time put a sell stop in. I'm long one. So I'm going to click the sell button again. But this time, I'm going to dra drag the trade ticket lower to where I want to put a stop at. I don't know. We'll pick a number here, uh, 94. And I'm going to hit sell. Now I have, here it is on the chart. It's mimicked on the chart, 94 even. I could change it here. I could change it on my chart. Doesn't matter. Totally, totally changeable. Dion asked the, the, the million dollar question. How, how much, how do we know how much we're risking on a trade? Well, so in this particular case, I'm four points away from my entry, right? And I know in, in my head, I know each point is worth $50. So I'm, I'll multiply 50 times four, and I'm going to get $200 as my risk on this particular trade. Is that your question? Yeah, I mean, you're, you're going to kind of, you're going you're gonna to know the point sizes and the values. You know, you're going to get that muscle memory as you go. You know, you'll, you'll figure that out. 
the the area where I placed the stop was random for demonstration purposes, Deanne. So there, the, Tuesdays and Thursdays, we try to get more scientific on where to actually place your stop. But for this demonstration, I just threw it threw it on there. Okay. <clears throat> so going over to this side, again, we got the flatten button here that's duplicated. We got the cancel all button here that's duplicated. Um, you know, we could we could add another entry if we want. Let's say, hey, I want to buy another one this time at 98 even. You hit the buy button again and you bring it down to 98 even or whatever price you want. If my if I'm that nimble and you hit the buy button. Now I sent a second unit, right? A second unit in there uh, to uh, buy a second unit. Remember, you could scale in or scale out on trades if you want. If you do that, it doubles up on everything. Instead of having a $50 point, you have a hundred dollar point. So be careful with that. That's what I'm talking about with the risk and the margins and all that stuff. Be careful with that. Now I'm long two contracts. I'm plus two contracts. And my average price, I got an average price that's different, right? It's 98.50. That's my average price. You know, it's different. You know, I got one unit at 99 and one unit at 98. Average is 98.50. Now, you know, of course I need to do something else here. I need to add another stop because I only have one here. So I could either double up there or I could have put another stop at a different place same with the profit target let's let's place a profit target at a different area let's place it at uh, 91 even let's we'll split it in half so here's the anatomy of this trade I'm short two I'm long two sorry plus two from 98.50 I have my first profit target at 01 my second profit target at 02 and my my stops consolidated at uh, 95 and you know we could tighten this up a little bit click and click moves everything up everybody with me so far <clears throat> rc says too fast oh i yeah sorry i know i'm trying to cover a lot of ground um really what i should do is break these events up into trading ladder and chart um apologize for that but there seem to be a lot of a lot of folks asking me for this presentation so for sure go back to the YouTube video I'll try to slow down a little bit I'm not in any hurry um, typically I try to be done in 50 minutes on the Tuesday and Thursday events but um, today I've got time so we could have some fun all right so let's do a couple more advanced things let's do a couple more advanced things I'm gonna I'm gonna hit the I'm gonna hit the flatten button I'm gonna start over all right, I just sold two at the market. It canceled all my working orders, and everything is everything is good in the universe. Now, I want to do what's called a simple bracket. Check my settings. I want to make sure that we allow for advanced OCO brackets. I'm going to click on that. We're good. Now, at any time you want to save a configuration, uh, let's do that. I'm going to hit the A button, and I'm going to hit Save. I just saved this configuration. You could save up to seven of them. You could save up to seven of them. I just saved that one. Uh, at the bottom here, we'll talk about this later. Let's do a let's do a simple bracket. It's called a simple bracket. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and put a stop loss in. Let's say I want my stop loss to be ten ticks, and I want my take profit to be twelve ticks. Simple bracket. Ignore the size ratio. I'm gonna turn it on. I am going to place a limit order at a price and once I'm filled <clears throat> if I'm filled it'll automatically send a stop loss and it'll automatically send a take profit uh, to the exchange right so I have a stop loss 10 ticks deep from where I'm filled at I'll have a take profit 12 ticks from where I'm filled at and that will go in automatically I won't have to do anything I'm leaning back in my chair right now I'm twiddling my pen and let's see if we could kind of force this to get filled a little bit by chasing it up. Click and click. There we go. We got filled. Stop automatically pops in here. 10 down. 98 down to 95 half. Target automatically up here. Three points or 12 ticks. And not only is it there, but this is an order. This is an OCO. Simple bracket OCO. Order cancels order. OCO stands for order cancels order. Whichever one of these targets is filled or hit the other will automatically cancel some people call them order cancels other 
but order cancels order. Whichever one is hit, the other one will automatically cancel, and it will result in a flat position with nothing working, right? And it gets even better. It gets a little bit better than what I just said because this is server side now. These instructions and these orders, these orders are sent to the exchange, but the instructions for the OCO are held server side. I could log off. I could go to Starbucks, which I'm going to do as soon as we're done with the presentation, even though it's like negative three outside. I haven't had enough coffee today. And let it go. It'll work. It's, 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 you've told the, you've told, you know, it's, it's an automated trade at this point. Uh, brackets are after, Greg, after you place the trade, the bracket turns off. So when you're ready to place the next one, you turn it on and then place it. And I'll show you that again. Let's do it again. I'm going to hit flat and start over. Auto exit. I'm going to turn it on. Turn on auto exit. I have that pop-up bubble popping up. And I'm going to move over to my price. Put a limit order in. Wow, look at that thing bounce. That's fun. And then let's, go, let's get filled. And then because it was highlighted originally green, prior to placing the limit order, the trade went in effect. It just toggles on and off. Everything mimicked on the chart. Everybody's happy. Now let's do the same thing. I'm going to do a simple bracket from the sh from the short side, right? We did it from the long side. We're plus one. We did it from the long side. We're going to do it for for the short side right now. And so what I'm doing is I'm going to hit flatten again. Get out. Now in this case, I'm going to do. I don't know. We'll, we'll turn on auto exit again. And I'm going to try to do a limit order to sell one. So there we go. In the opposite, it's the same simple bracket, but the stop is up high this time. Buy stop is above, target is below. Hands off, order cancels order, OCO. I can go log off, go watch some reruns of Welcome Back, Cotter, and we're good to go. Only person will get that are people that are way old, my, my age. <laughs> Uh, let's see if we can get an OCO to actually kick in here. If the auto exit box is off and you place a trade, it's just a regular trade. It's just a regular trade. All right, so we're not going to see this materialize. Let's let's do let's do the same trade. Only we'll do it on the chart. We'll do the same simple bracket. We'll do it on the chart. Let's go ahead and hit flatten again. <clears throat> And I am out. Now, what I'm going to do? Let's do it from the buy side. I'll click up. I'll click on the buy trade ticket. We've done this already. I'm going to drag it down to the price I'm interested in. Then there's this little plus add auto exit stop. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to click on that. Uh oh, I froze. My, I froze my machine. Let's try again. Buy auto exit stop. It gives me a second ticket. Drag it around to the, where I want to place my stop. And then it's asks me auto exit limit. Let's take profit. It's going to give me another one. I can drag it and put it where I want. Place my order. And it's sent. Now, it looks a little different because my, you know, the, I haven't got filled yet, right? These are child orders. We're holding these server side on your behalf. Once you get filled at, at 96.75, then these will be sent to the exchange on your behalf. Profit target, stop loss. When you see these dotted lines, it's called a child order. It's not sent yet. Sweat hogs. Mark got it. <laughs> uh, and then uh, uh, the stop loss also is a child order. Now, right now, technically, the name of this trade is an OTO, order trigger, triggers other. Right. Once this order is triggered, this 96.75, then the bracket that's a child order right now gets sent to the exchange as a limit order and a stop. And those are now no longer child orders or parent orders. They're in the, you're, they're in the game. They're in the market. Everybody with me? Let's chase this a little bit, too, just so we get filled. There we go. These lines turn solid. Profit target, 
stop profit target stop so let's go we're going to do that again just to make sure everyone sees how to do it um can you can actually change ticks to points let's do that let's do that let me hit the flatten button and then i'll show you how to do we'll do it again on the chart uh settings there's short board there's uh keyboard shortcuts auto exit bracket stays on i know gary was worried that i had it turn off all the time if you click on this thing it'll stay green if you don't always use the automated brackets then i wouldn't recommend you turning this into a plus to keep that always green legacy color we already covered show p l instead of volume i'm gonna we could do that let's do that next Click on the plus sign. Now what it's going to show, I just did a market order real fast just to, just to show it. Instead of the volume profile on the right-hand side of the dome, it shows what my P&L would be, positive or negative, if I get out of the trade wherever the market is trading at that given time. So right now it kind of tells me, hey, I'm up 50 bucks. I'm up 25. I'm up 37.50. I'm up 25. I'm up 37.50. It'll, dri it'll drive you crazy. But... It's, it gives you a different view, a different, you know, information displayed in a different way. So that's kind of one feature. I know that's not your question. We're going to get to that, Robert, in a second. Well, actually, let's get to it now. Let's go to settings. And then I'm going to change <clears throat> display Greenwich Mean Time, no. Hide Mini Dome, no. Show Grid, no. Require double click to place order. No. Maybe you can't change it to points. I thought you can. Hang on a second. You might have stumped me. Who is this? Mark? No, Robert. You might have stumped me. Allow sh shortcuts. No. Auto exit. No. Hide. No. Legacy. 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 Display. And you yeah, maybe you can't. I'll do some research on this and figure out why we can't. That's not good. What he's talking about is could we make this a tick instead of a dollar amount on the bottom center? And I don't see a place to do that on here. My bad. I thought we could do it. Anyway, um, before I go dig into this stuff and do multi-target brackets, let's do one more simple bracket on the chart. Just flatten everything up. I'm going to go sell. We'll do it opposite. Pick my limit order. Auto, add, auto, exit, stop. Pick a, pick a price, add auto exit limit, pick a price, send my order. So this is the opposite. I want to go short here. Here's my stop. There's my target. Boom. My, I was triggered. I got filled to 39 even. Stop. Limit order went to the exchange. <laughs> okay, so... That's that. Let's go ahead and cancel all, flatten all. When you flatten from the chart, you get this message. Abandon means you changed your mind. Flatten only flattens your position. Flatten and cancel flattens your positions and cancels all your working orders. So I'm going to click on that, and it, everything's good. Dome mode down here. Let's let's change this up a little bit. It says none, none, none. You see that? First of all, let's get rid of that bubble. Where's the tips at? Show show grid on dome ladder. No. Required. Let's see. Show keyboard shortcut. I thought there was a way to hide that stupid bubble that pops up. There's got to be a way to do it. We'll figure it out. I'm going to click. I'm going to go control left. And I want to preset six different markets on this trading ladder. Let's go to ES1. Control the second none. We'll go to the micro. We talked about the micro NQ. Control none. Let's go to crude oil. 
April. Control none. Let's go to gold. GC. Where's GC? Uh, GCJ. I think one of these markets is actually in H. I think it's crude oil. So let's go back here and go CLH. Uh, add bonds, ZB. Let's add the euro currency, 6E, euro FX. Okay. I'm going to hit my save configuration button. Now, instead of opening multiple domes, I could just toggle. Now, I know what you're saying. What happened to the legacy color scheme? Each market, unfortunately, you're going to have to save. So I would go settings, legacy color, save config. Toggle back to ES, toggles back to ES. Settings, I don't want to do the PL anymore. I want to see the volume. Okay. So that's that's what those these are kind of presets where you want to you know instead of opening up a new dome or maybe you don't have enough window space or or you just want to be efficient um, you could literally just click on those buttons and toggle around same thing with the chart you want to change the chart let's go to M uh, and Q type in your symbol it gives you a list of what they think you're looking for you click on it <coughs> and it changes it right there on the fly now I'm going to give you another uh, another uh, ninja trick. I'll use the word ninja trick, and let's just go ahead and buy one at the market here. Quantity one, buy one at the market. <coughs> Excuse me, and then I'm going to sell one at the market. I'm just going to get. I just wanted to show you. I just made a trade. In the trading panel, you'll see ES. M and Q, right? I just made a trade there, so it's going to show up here. My position's 11 by 11 overall. If I click on any of these, it will toggle the chart. I click on ES, it will open up an ES chart. If I click on M and Q, it'll, it'll open up an M and Q chart. This closed, there's a little, all right, on the positions bar, there's a little closed button there it shows you all the trades you made and it gives you little labels on when you made them where you made them and when you made them I've made way too many trades for this to make any sense but if you just made it you know traded a few times you would be able to do some really good diagnostic analysis using that part of it the quadruple hamburger over here just shows you all the contracts you have access to and, and again if you just want to change a, a market just click on it and it'll change the chart for you. It's kind of a shortcut. Okay. Before we go into multi-target brackets and trailing stops, I am going to answer a question. So Rob says, what's the difference between buy market and join the bid? Okay. Um, that's a great question. So the market, let's find a market that's not moving very fast. Let's take treasury bonds. Let me just go back and display, excuse me. And then I'm going to hit save config. Okay. So and treasury bonds doesn't move very quickly like the other ones do. You see the market's trading, the last traded price was 67.09. The highest bid is, is 09. The lowest offer is 10. That's the bid ask spread. The bid ask spread is the difference between the highest bid and the lowest offer. In this particular case, it's one tick. It's as small as it could be. And, you know, the market moves around. You know, sometimes it trades on the bid, sometimes it trades on the offer, and sometimes it goes down further. Sometimes it goes up further. So that's the, that, that's, that's the bid ask spread. If I were to buy a contract at the market right now, it's going to give me a contract. It's going to let me buy one at the lowest available offer. So if I hit buy right now, I'm going to buy it at 10. 167. Now, now I'll buy it at 9. This is the lowest offer. Whatever the lowest number is here in the book, that's the lowest offer. That's, that's, that's what a market order is, the best available price. If I want to sell one at the market, 
It's going to give me that. It's going to sell me one at the highest available price, which is 08. I'd sell it at 08. So um, the bid ask spread is defeating me in that case. It might be okay. You still might want to be short at 08, but that's that's something to think about. Now, if I want to join the bid, it's going to put a limit order in at the highest at the highest the highest the highest price there is at 08. If I join the offer, it's going to put it at the lowest offer there is, 09. See, it's just going to get me here or get me there. So that's the difference between a market order and a join the bid or join the offer. There's a train of thought that says if you join the bid, you're going to save yourself a tick on the way in. If you or join the offer, you're going to save yourself self a tick on the way in versus a market order. However, there's the possibility that you don't get your fill. If I join the bid right now at 09 and I won't get it, and the market moves upward instead of downward, then I won't get my fill. Market orders you're going to get. At, you know, at best available price, no question about it, you're going to get it. Join the bid, join the offer, limit orders, you might not get. Sorry for that long, long-winded answer, but that's the difference, Rob. Hopefully that was helpful. It's a comp, it's not e for a brand new dome trader, it's not an easy concept. Um, there was another really good question here. Um, Mark says you don't need level two chart to trade. Correct. Okay. So the level two chart, the 10 ticks deep, right? This is a 10 ticks deep chart. There's a version you could, you, instead of paying the $10 a month for the data here, that's an exchange cost. You could do what's called top of book where you only see the volume, the best bid and the best offer volume. You don't see all the rest of these numbers. You don't see all the rest of these numbers. Instead of 10 ticks deep, it's one tick deep. And that costs you a dollar. So you're saving nine bucks if that's what you, well, the other one's $11, I'm sorry. This one's a dollar. You save yourself 10 bucks, your call. Some people like the, de the depth, some people don't like the depth. I, I don't think it helps me personally. So that's my my thing. But since I work here, I have a demo account that has it on there. So I feel a little bit privileged. In any event, um, I was being so tongue in cheek. We're going on an hour, so I'm getting a little cranky. All right. So I think I've got I've caught up on all the questions. Um, yeah. Right click on this doesn't do anything. So don't do that. Um, how do you scale the chart? I'm not sure what you mean by scale, but you just use your fingers, drag this thing around or drag that thing around or hit the plus, drag. The charts are really draggable. You get a lot of dragging on the charts. Is that your question, uh, Jan? Jan, Jan, it depends on where you're from. Apologize for that. Okay, let's do, let's, let's up our game a little bit and do a multi-target bracket. And let's go back to a market that's moving around a little bit. Let's go to a market that's moving around a lot a bit. No, that's too much for the demonstration. Let's keep it at ES. Keep it at E mini S and P. Now, let's say I want to enter a two contract trade. And you can do any number you want, but I'm going to do two. And I am going to set my stop loss at 10 again. But what I want to do is I want to have multiple targets. So I'm going to do my first target is going to be 12, and then I'm going to enter a, a colon or a semicolon, whatever you prefer, and I'm going to make my second one 15. Leave size ratio alone in this example. Turn auto exit on, and then I'm going to sell a contract, sell two contracts rather. And what will happen is it's going to do the same bracketing, same server side OCO, where we have a stop and we have a target, but the target's going to be broken up into two different prices, one 12 ticks below where I'm entering and one 15 ticks below where I'm entering. And let's just jive up the charts here with, there we go. 10 ticks up is my stop. And my profit target's 12 and 15. This is server side. I'm waiting for something to happen. If I get stopped out, these two profit targets will get canceled. If I alternatively, if I get filled on one of these, the stop changes from two to one. If I get filled on both of these, the stop is zero and I'm flat. This is a, a server side. 
Yeah, left mouse button, right. I'm sorry. I, you know, if you're using an iPad or, or a screen, um, yeah, I'm just using my mouse. I'm just clicking with my mouse. So remember, I'm clicking, holding, moving. Left click, hold, move. You'll get the little fist, power fist, pops up there. It's grabbing it. Move it. Okay, everybody with me? Okay, sweet. So that's called a multi-target bracket. And you could get creative with it. I mean, you can get crazy with it. Let me cancel all here. Flatten, sorry. Start over. Let's say I wanted to do a, a five contract trade. And I decided, you know what? I want my first unit at 12. I want my second unit at 17. No, so first, first to 12, second, 17, third, fourth, uh, what am I saying? 12, 15, 17, 21. Turn it on. Send your limit order in. Five contracts. You should have five different profit targets. If all goes well. Let's see what happens. Boom, boom, boom. There we go. Five different profit targets. I'm going to get stopped out right away, of course, because this is a demo. And then what we'll see is all of these profit targets, we will get canceled. We're flat, OCO, server side, everything's cool. Now, let's say I want to do the same thing, except I only want, I only want three. I want to only put th uh, three targets. I want... But I want to I want to change the size ratio, right? I want the first one to be one unit, I want the second one to be three units, and I want the third to be one unit. I'm going to turn it on, and what this is going to do, it's going to weight the middle 15 with a three. Sure enough, 12 ticks up. I got one lot. I want is my target. 15 ticks, I have a three lot target. 17, I have a one lot. So the five is fulfilled. Where things start going funky is when you don't match the the, the, the take profit in the size ratios to get, if you do something like this. So be, so pay, so you gotta focus on that. You could use commas or uh, semicolons. No, 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 my bad, my bad. Colons or semicolons. Sorry, Ken, I, I know. Sometimes I talk faster than my brain works and then my brain stops working but i've already spoken <laughs> oh my god all right anyway um so that's it that's that's it let's talk about the let's talk about the trailing stops i'm not a fan of the trailing stops just so you know um let's just make this uh a 12 a 12 a one so um what i'm going to do for a trailing stop is i am going to turn my bracket on do a one lot. I'm going to turn on, I'm going to click on the T. It'll activate the trailing stop. I'm going to go ahead and click to enter my trade. And then when I get filled, the bracket will go in and the stop loss will, tra will trail upward tick by tick as the market continues to make a high watermark from my entry position. And let's kind of accelerate this whole idea. Let's try to accelerate it so we can get filled. Everything's slowing down, of course, when I do the trailing stop example. Typical. Typical presentation dilemma. Here we go. Let's go. There we go. All right. So now as we go up, the trail, the stop will start. Well, if we go up, if we don't go up, we're not going to see it. But the idea is as we go up toward our target, the stop will trail upward also. Not a fan of this. These markets typically are too volatile. And as a result, um, you get prematurely stopped out, right? So we just we just bumped up to 90 half. If we can get another ticket, there we go, uh, 90, 75. You know, as the blue line, the market goes up, the stop will tick up. So experiment with this. I mean, on a market like the, mini, the micro NASDAQ that moves around a lot, uh, that'll give you a better uh, a better chance, in my opinion. Any questions on that? 
Okay, sweet. Um, what else do I have? I mean, we've covered a lot of ground here. We've covered a lot of ground here. Um, any questions? Anything else you'd like to see? Right, right, uh, Jan. The stop does not. The target does not trail. It's a trailing stop. All right. Well, let me just do some housekeeping stuff then. Um, you know, the best thing to do. Here's here's my thing. Here, here's what I'm going to suggest. Uh, where's my page at? If you have time and you haven't already, free real-time practice account. Fill this out. You can log in the exact same way I just logged in. You're going to get an email immediately with the username and password, and you could do this whole setup and experiment. If you're brand new to futures, definitely do it. If you're not, I'll, I'll go over some chart stuff too before we're done. If you're not, if you're not um, new to futures, but you're new to infinity, definitely do it. If you've already done it and you're ready to open an account, there's a big purple button at the top that says fund open an account. Application is electronic, online, straightforward uh, type of deal like you would for any account. Um, and that's it. So, I mean, that's kind of kind of what I want to emphasize. We're, we're going to do some chart stuff in a second. On the education side here, news and events, Thursday, this is tomorrow, live interactive broadcast. I'm going to do, using this setup, we're going to talk about trade ideas, right? We're going to talk about trade ideas, try to apply some science using the charts uh, based on my experience and my opinions. Um, and we'll look for uh, some good trade ideas. That's what we're doing every Tuesday and Thursday, except it's an hour earlier. It's 9 o'clock Chicago time. Um, Sorry about that. Someone just slipped a note instead of 10 o'clock. So that's tomorrow, 9 o'clock. I'll send everybody an email if you're interested in doing that. Robert, it only it, the trailing step only moves as the market goes up. It doesn't move back down if the market goes back down. That would defeat the purpose. It, it should act, Oh, there we go. Successful. So it should act like the behavior we just saw. So make sure you have auto exit on and the T highlighted yellow. Okay, that's the two things you need to have on. All right, let's shoot over here. I'm gonna close this up. We're gonna look at some charts. Get rid of the yin and yang. Um, we'll just do, and we go over this in detail on my Tuesday and Thursday events, but you know, it's a candle chart, candlestick chart, my favorite. If you wanna change it to open, high, low, close, you could change it. Change it to line on close, change it, hollow candle. There's all these options, right? In addition to all these options, there's Hakanashi, line break, Renko, range bars. Um, uh, you know, I'm not sure what log scale is. I do know what log scale is, but not for me. Inverted access, not for me. Extended hours, there is no extended hours in futures trading. It's 23 hours a day. If this were an equity chart, you'd click on that. So you'd have extended hours for your equity trading. This is a futures chart. So don't, that's nothing. Range selectors, nothing. Grid, you click on grid, it gives you a grid. Can't really see it very well on a black background, but those are the displays. You wanna you wanna change your 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 time zone, you change your time zone. You wanna change your language, you have these options. You change your language to any of these options. Hopefully, uh, your options here. The uh, on displays, you could change it to a, a day theme, which is a white background, night theme, or you could create your own theme, changing backgrounds and grid lines and font colors and candle colors and wick colors and all that stuff. And you just type in whatever you want to call it. To save it, hit the save button, and you have your own personalized theme. It might be a favorite sports team. Who knows what colors you might like? Uh, Bob, the, you know, you could open an account today, right this very second, for $1,000 to trade if you want to trade the micro contracts. 
the E-mini S&P, the NASDAQ. There's other micro contracts too you might be interested in. Um, if you want to trade any of the other ones, the bigger ones, then it's a $3,000 minimum. So the barred entry is kind of low. Um, and that purple open your account button is my favorite. Feel free to click on that. Okay. Robert says, never mind. What, what hit Robert? Did it go? Works fine. Okay, cool. Um, so we, we handled the display. Views are just views I've saved, right? You could save a view with different indicators. These are all the ones I've saved. Um, and once you set up your indicators and all the stuff you want, you just save your view. Time frame. Someone asked about tick charts. The interday charts, daily, weekly, monthly. The intraday charts is 1, 2, 3, 5, 10, 15, 30, 1 hour, 2 hours, 4 hours. If you're using a 4 minute and 30 second chart, you cannot do that here. Preset tick charts are here. These are the popular tick settings. If you want a tick chart. Studies, there's a ton of them. Most of these studies are out of the box, uh, best practices, nationally recognized indicators, Bollinger Bands, as an example. Donchian Channel, Moving Averages, all sorts of stuff here. And we'll do an example in a second is here. Volume Profile, my favorite. I've customized at the top. AT Volume Profile is there. Some special customized studies here from Simpler. Tick and trend is here. Tick and trend is here. Um, and then some specialized stuff, advanced pivot, pivot points, previous open, high, low, close, and that kind of thing. So if you want to add something here, and let's go ahead and add an oscillator. I'm going to add the Commodity Channel Index, CCI. Just going to click on it. It's going to put it on the chart. I could modify it either by going to the studies and clicking on that CCI. And it gives me my parameters that I could change. Or there's a little cog here in the lower left. Hit the clock cog. And it allows me to change periods and pretty much overbought, oversold. Change the zero line to red and hit done. Pretty easy to do. Okay, yeah. So Bollinger Band, MACD, same. You set, yeah, let's go. Let's do that. Let's add a, let's add a MACD. MACD, click on it, adds it, little cog there, change the settings, the colors, whatever you want to do, um, done. If you want to make it, put it above the CCI, there's a little arrow here on the left, you just click on it, it moves it up. You want to move, move it all the way to the top of the chart, arrow, moves it up. Back down, moves it down, easy to do. You want to get rid of it, exit out. You want to get rid of it, exit out. Now, I'm going to do another another thing here. I want to show you. I know we're getting into triple overtime right now, but I'm going to add a moving average cross, right? So I'm going to go moving average cross. So I add moving average, and I'll select my first one, 26 period, based on the close, simple, not any of this stuff, not exponential, double exponential, triple exponential, holes, wells water, and I don't want to take anything away from any of those types of moving averages. They're all very valid. And, you know, when you have your demo account, go ahead and, you know, test it. Kick the, kick the tires out. Kick the tires out. No, go kick the tires out. Just kick the tires and then see what works for you. But I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to change the color here to, to, to blue. To blue. And I'm going to hit uh, OK. And you'll see it on the chart. You hit, see it on the chart. Now, let's go ahead and add, let's add, let's add the second part of the cross, right? Let's add the second part of the moving average cross. And we'll do it again. This time, we'll make it a fast moving average. You're only going to calculate six periods. Everything else is the same. And we'll make it yellow and hit done. There's my moving average cross on my actual main panel. Now, it might be a little cluttered if you have trend lines and other things going on here. So you could move the moving average cross to its own panel. And let me show you how to do that. I'm going to go to studies. I'm going to click on the first one, the 26 period moving average one. And I'm going to go to own panel. I'm going to click on panel and click own a panel, which just makes a new panel at the bottom. And hit done and OK. 
going to go back up to studies and pick my fast moving average. And I'm going to go to panel and I'm going to click the MA panel. So when it, the first time I clicked own panel, the second time I click MA panel and it puts it at the bottom. So now it's out of my way. I can still see it. I can still adjust it with, by clicking on my mouse on the, on, the, uh, on the median line here and moving it up and down. And it's, it's, it's just a little, a quick little housekeeping thing I like to do. Okay, so um, the last thing I'm going to do today. I mean, you can call me anytime you want. Just don't call me within 30 minutes of this presentation. I still haven't had my Starbucks. Um, I'm going to go to studies. Uh, this is for volume profile. This is I like this setup for volume profile. I'm going to find it volume profile. AT volume profile. Not the volume profile at the bottom. This one's bogus. I mean, it's a technical term. It's just bogus. Don't use it. AT, <laughs> AT volume profile. Click on that. And you don't see anything, right? Because I had a black background. So, but it's up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just, I'm going to click on it. I'm going to hit volume profile and I want to change some of the parameters. I'm going to change my bar height from one to a multiple of the tick. And it's a four tick for per point. So I'm going to make the bar height four ticks or eight ticks or six ticks. I like four for today. And then I'm going to change my POC length. This doesn't do anything to the math. This just makes it easier to see on the chart to as low as I could get it, 25. It just shrinks it. It takes up less real estate on the chart by changing the POC length to smaller. Value percentage stays 70%. One standard deviation. Keep that there. Opacity, I'm going to juice that up to as high as I can. Again, black background. I want to see it better. I'm going to add numbers to each individual histogram bar. That represents volume for that four tick price range. I'm gonna left adjust, put it out of my way on the left hand side. Lines, if I click on that, it will extend the, the top of the value area, the point of control and the bottom of the value area. I don't need that, I'm not gonna use it. Same with values, I could put the values over there for you on the right hand side of the chart on the Y axis. You could hide the profile altogether so you just have the numbers. That's not for me. And my start time is 1700, which is last night. I want a 23 hour profile, I wanna see the profile for the whole day. It's gonna end at 1600, which is four o'clock today. <clears throat> Volume, I'm just going to change some colors. That's all this is doing. This is all this is doing. And there you have it. And I, I'll, I'll leave that up for a second so you can write that down. Paulie, that's kind of, that's a great question. I don't know. We're going to give it a try now. Let me go ahead and hit done. Let's get let's clean this up a little bit. I'm just going to get rid of the moving averages. And the question is, can you add a CCI indicator with two different periods on the same chart? And this is the time in the presentation when I don't know what's going to happen. So let's give it a whirl. Let's see. Uh, commodity channel index. Here it is. Um, it gives me the ability show is underlay uh, I don't think so kiddo it doesn't give me a, the ability well yeah maybe 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 we, we're, we're, we're in it to win it own panel let's hit that okay let's try studies again we're gonna add a second one commodity channel index we added the second one all right, so let's go back up and let's 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 edit that. Let's change it to I don't know a, a fourteen period. That might be more normal. And then um, we're going to put it into the CCI panel. Well, we did it. It's not pretty. It's not. It's not pretty. But we did it. Is that what you mean, Polly? Learn something new every presentation. And now I got to think about this. How would I use this in real life? 
Okay, um, we're going to wrap it up. I do want to remind everybody, and I'll answer the last couple of questions that came in, but before I do that, important, trading futures options on futures involves substantial risk of loss, not suitable for all traders and investors. Oftentimes you have a high combination of leverage and volatility. And although that could be an equation for opportunity, also equation for risks, be careful, only fund your futures trading account with risk capital. If you don't know where to fit on your risk capital curve of things, give me a call, a confidential call, we'll talk about it, give you my opinion. Past performance, not indicative of, result, of future results. We didn't talk about past performance. Be careful when other people do. Could be a red flag. And then uh, we were on a live simulated trading account today. Any questions on risk, type them in. Open account buttons really there. You click on this first thing here. Transact Futures online account applications. If you're on social media, give me a thumbs up. If you think it was worth a thumbs up. If you don't think it's worth a thumbs up, don't do the thumbs down. <laughs> it's just my hope and prayer. Um, all right, so last question. Does the demo account have the point of control and other things we saw today? Yes, I am in a demo account right now, Bob. Everything you see, it has it on there. So for sure, get it. Uh, awesome. Oh, thank Efren, I appreciate that. Um, looking forward to talking to you at that point in the day, everybody. Uh, and remember, be safe out there. Be good to each other. Hopefully, I'll see you next tomorrow, Thursday. Take care.